We're here with Chuck Longfield, who is Chief Scientist of Blackboard. We're at the Institute of Fundraising National Convention in London, and Chuck has just given a fascinating presentation on the value of data to a packed room here at the Paddington Hilton. Chuck, can you tell us about um, some of the issues you covered, and in particular the value of measuring mistakes in data? Well, um, I, um, in particular on the, uh, the value of mistakes, is it isn't always obvious to people um, what the cost is of, of making a mistake. Uh, there are um, uh, you know, opportunities to have, say, for example, duplicate donors in a database or to have a typo on somebody's name or address. Um, duplicate donors is the obvious cost where um, <coughs> you're saying uh, uh, you're sending two pieces of mail or, or uh, an inconsistent treating a donor as a new donor when they've really been a long time donor because of those duplicates. Um, and so there's some of those, those more obvious things, but, but donors actually perceive a lot about your organization and the quality of your organization through that communication. So when you send me two pieces of mail, I'm actually inferring something about the type of organization you are and the quality of the work that you do when I see that. So that's sort of a second level of sort of cost in the relationship. And, and what's very important then is to measure, well, what was the cost of, of um, sending those those two pieces of communication. What was the long-term cost of the donor perceiving you differently? So I'll give you an example. Is um, if you make a typo in a person's name, right? Just a typo. So instead of my name is Chuck. Um, sometimes I get solicitations where they call me Chooch, C-H-U-C-H. And, um, and uh, they've also butchered my rather simple last name of Longfield um, by making typos there. Um, I've uh, done analysis that has shown that uh, donors are 10% less likely to give a donation. And the donation is about 10% smaller when you make typos to their names. So there's a very substantial, in effect, a cumulative effect of about 20% less on making a typo. Now you could say, well, you know, we're going to make mistakes, and everybody makes mistakes, but does your organization actually have a process in place by which you're actually trying to find those mistakes and correct them if you really knew that you were losing 20% of those donations. Now obviously you'd have to test it in your own organization to see if it was true, but I think uh, you know, in general there is a cost to duplicate donors and to um, uh, typos other than just the obvious mistake that you think of, well, you know, they're, giving, they're, uh, they're going to perceive me differently. And on the positive side, uh, you also suggested that it is incredibly value to capture some of the softer data, such as when someone rings up and either gives you their new address or even tells you that they love your organization. Can you tell us more about yes, that? Yes, exactly. Well, well, it's one of the, the, the more interesting observations that I've made. That So most computer systems that, that uh, fundraisers use traditionally use three variables to actually group or segment all donors. It's recency, frequency, and amount. So when did you last give, how much did you last give, and how often have you given? And, um, and that pretty much segments everybody. But people are a much more diverse group. So you and I both both maybe have given a couple of years in a row, and maybe our last gift was both $100. But you may care passionately about the organization, and I may only have a lukewarm relationship um, with the organization. And so the, the challenge becomes, how do I know the difference? And I, I believe, and I've shown in, in some of the, uh, the work analysis that I've done, is, is that, that there are people that are exposing little tidbits of, of their relationship with the organization every day. So the example that I use is if a donor calls to change their address, they're many times more likely to actually go on and have a much deeper relationship with the organization, giving a major gift or a planned gift. But the reason is, is that in the act of calling to change their address, they're actually saying to you, I don't want you to lose track of me, which is a very powerful piece of information because to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of donors who donate and if you gave them a few months or a year or two off from, from asking them for a gift, they'd be perfectly happy. Right? They, it's not that they don't like your organization, but a lot of times they're being asked very frequently to give. Some people want to give with that frequency, other people don't, and I, and, um, and I don't have a, an easy way of telling the difference. So I call those rich interactions, where you and I are actually talking and you're telling me something. Now in that case, I was using an example of a donor calling. When they call, sometimes they actually say, by the way, I love your organization. The work that you do is just phenomenal. You're my favorite nonprofit. And then I I say, well, what do you then put in their computer system? Did you put in that they're your favorite nonprofit and that they really love you, or did you just put in the new address? 
Fabulous. Chuck Longfield, thank you very much indeed. You're very welcome.